So managing inventory here at Rickshaw, we don't have a fancy computer system for managing inventory. Uh, in our business, we don't have a lot of things that we have to deal with. Uh, you know, our messenger bag has maybe 20 components between the fabric, a couple different colors, the labels. When you really net it out, the, the bill of materials, the list of parts that goes into that is pretty short. And so we don't need some big fancy system for managing that. We do things really by a system that's similar to Kanban, which is basically there's a bin full of parts and there's a bin right behind it full of parts. When the first bin's out and the second bin comes to the forward, it means it's time to reorder. In our fabric, we generally have no more than one or two rolls of fabric. We use one of those rolls, we know we got to order more. Everything that we use here is available from our distributors or from our manufacturers um, on demand. So they have stock. So we're letting um, our manufacturers and our distributors hold the primary stock because anything you buy and put into stock is just tying up your capital, tying up your money. And so if we were sitting on thousands and thousands of yards of fabric, um, then it would just, you know, that would be money that could be put to other uses or it could be in the bank. What you see here, this is all of the inventory of fabric that we have and a few rolls in back stock. Basically frees up this space to be mostly production and not very much storage. And so we want to minimize the amount of storage and maximize the amount of production because that's the most productive use of what is otherwise pretty expensive real estate here in San Francisco. You know, our inventory here at the brewery is one thing, but our distributor inventories is really what we need to watch. And we've got 106 distributors around the country in 36 states. So we've put in a actually a very sophisticated forecasting system called Demand Solutions. It's an algorithmic system that really takes into account holidays and weather patterns and last year's sales. And we're able to really predict what our distributors are gonna need better than they do. Well, we decided in our little company here, since we're not trying to be the kings of the bag business, we decided, you know what, we're not going to do that, you know, forecasting, build to stock, go and try and sell a bunch of stuff. We're going to let people order from us and we're going to build it when they ask us to. So whether it's a retailer that says they want 50 bags or an individual who says I want one bag in this color combination, we wait for the order, we then make that order and we ship it to that customer. So we only make what people ask us to make, not what we think people are going to order. You know, we're not here to make as many bags as possible, we're here to make as many bags as necessary to run the kind of company that we want to run. So building to order works for us. A factory with 12 sewers and instead of 1,200 or 12,000 sewers is the kind of scale that we want to operate on. I call it human scale. To us, that works and that scale works for us. No one's driving this company for hyper growth or to hit some you know, financial goal so they can sell the business. I own the business and I have the luxury of marching to my own drummer. And that, in the end, is what small business is all about, doing your own thing. And most small business owners will tell you that they got into the business because they wanted to be their own boss. And I'm one of those people. And so every day, we're here being our own bosses, doing the things the way we want to do them. And for me, it's happier that way and more fun.